I'm Nikos. Welcome back to TNN. This is week seven of TNN. We're going to jump right into week seven with yet another Crash Class. Spanish one, Spanish two, and eighth grade Spanish. Okay, and do you think, how do you think people who take Spanish are going to use this after they graduate? No matter how much Spanish you take, you will use it after you graduate. If you plan on going to college, Spanish will help you on your ACT because it will help you with your vocab in English. If you don't go to college, you're probably going to be working with people who speak Spanish. And do you think, like, if you do you think a Spanish I mean a Spanish speaking person can just come in and like learn something from it or do you think it's better if they teach Spanish for native speakers? We do have a class for native speakers which so helps our Spanish speakers with reading and writing. We do have some students who do not speak any English that take the lower levels of Spanish and while our students are learning low levels of Spanish, they're learning low levels of English. So there are always benefits for people who speak Spanish to take Spanish. With the upper levels of Spanish, which is not native speakers, some of our Hispanol Lantes can enhance their reading and writing skills. A lot of them don't have a lot of practice with reading and writing by taking the upper level Spanish courses. Okay, and about Hispanic, I mean, Hispanic achievers. Is it like, do you have to take Spanish class if you're in Hispanic Achievers or can you just join Hispanic no. Achievers? Anybody who identifies with the Hispanic culture can join Hispanic Achievers. You have to have a minimum GPA of a 2.5, um, be able to afford the entrance fee into the club, and um, you have to get a teacher recommendation form filled out. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now let's go on to another How Great Thou Arts. Hi, my name is Maggie Vandevelde, and this week on How Great Thou Arts, we'll be interviewing the new art teacher, Mr. Cockle. So how do you like Collins so far? Um, it's, it's an interesting school. Kids are great. Uh, staff, uh, fantastic. Uh, Laid-back atmosphere. I'm looking forward to a great year. So how do you inspire your students? Uh, I inspire my students by, you know, if we're working on a project, uh, I let them, let's say I introduce a subject, uh, I let them choose what avenue that they want to um, pursue as far as, you know, what, what their interests are. Uh, like next week we're starting a sculpture, um, like we're starting um, a junk sculpture. Basically, um, they assemble all their, all their junk. Um, just random items and by the way I need junk if you have junk bring it in I will take it um, and that can be anything so they bring in their junk they disassemble it and they create basically based off what their interests are what what they like to do um, and, and that generally gets some interesting interesting ideas so what are your plans for the PRISM concert and art show this year? Uh, plans for the PRISM concert this year, we're going to have an art show in the um, in the entryway. There's going to be kind of like a little bit of an art show uh, going on. Um, I also have my uh, Art One students right now, they're actually working on watercolor, um, watercolor paintings based off of uh, certain ideas from the 1930s to the 1960s. And uh, we're going to display that on like a uh, PowerPoint overhead projector. Wait, where are your glasses? They're called contacts. Oh. You're just not noticing this. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I asked. Let's go on to Tyler and Allison. With another current events. Hello, I'm Allison Vogt, and this week in current events, Vice President Joe Biden is backing a transgender military service. On October 3rd, during the Human Rights Campaign's annual dinner, Biden declared, no longer is there any question transgender people are able to serve in the United States military. Biden, who is known for his early support of gay marriage, has said that transgender rights are the civil rights issue of our time. According to Defense Secretary Ash Carter, the Pentagon's current rules on transgender military service are outdated. Along the same lines, the White House says that Obama's, Obama supports a Pentagon review aimed at ending the long ban on the issue. Although this has been said, there is no definite evidence that the ban will be lifted. Ending the ban would be another step toward ending gender and sexuality-based 
limits in the military. The review began in July and is intended to last six months in an attempt to determine the impact on the military's willingness to serve. The White House has avoided making an inference as to the outcome of the review, fearing that doing so would bring criticism against Obama for forcing politically driven changes regardless of the advice of his military commanders. Biden, on the other hand, has said that this should not be an issue. It's simple, but said Biden. All Americans are qualified to serve, should be able to serve. Will we see transgender people in our military? I guess we'll see in six months. This is Allison Vogt signing off. Have a good day. Now let's go to a video about the upcoming Prism concert. Now let's go into another college spotlight of the week. Now into another hallway talk show. Give me your best Forrest Gump impression. Life is like a box of chocolates, cause you never know what you're gonna get. Damn, you got me on that one. Damn. <laughs> Give us your best Forrest Gump impression. Life is bad. Uh, life is bad at chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get. All right. Life is like a box of chocolate. <laughs> I don't know who Forrest Gump is. Um. Do you have a hidden talent that nobody knows about? Um. I don't know. I, I guess origami. Origami? Yeah, I can do a cartwheel. Could could you demonstrate for us? Yeah, let me do a cartwheel so I can hurt myself. Hey, me too. Hey. A few. What are they? I'm creative and art. Yeah? Yeah. That's nice. And uh, hope you guys all have a great fall break. And signing off from the hallway talk show. Hey. Now on to Martha's Sports Report. Hi guys, welcome to Martha's Sport Report. This is Ryan Goodlett and we're going to be doing um, a trivia round with her and Kyle Goss from our football team to see who can win the most or answer the most questions right. Okay, are you ready? Yes, I guess. On a traffic light, is the green light on the top or the bottom? Oh. <laughs> the green light? The green light. Okay, the yellow's in the middle. The bottom? Okay, whose face is on time? <laughs> oh no. Oh my gosh, I feel stupid. Is it a dime? Trick picture. Oh. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> How many innings make up a professional baseball game? Nine. Okay, what is 12 times nine? Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, 108. How do you spell possum? Oh, there's an O in there. O P O S S U M. Who won the American American Civil War? The the Union. 
What's the capital of New York? Albany. What are the primary colors? Red, blue, and yellow. How many yards are our football field? 100. You won the last Super Bowl. The Patriots. Hi guys, we're here with Kyle Goss, one of our football players, and we're going to start your trivia now, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. On a traffic light, is the green light on the top or bottom? Bottom. Okay. Whose face is on the dime? I still don't know. I'm like getting out of here. How many innings make a pro professional baseball game? Nine. What's 12 times 9? 108. How do you spell possum? P-O-S-S-U-M Who won the American Civil War? Atlas <laughs> <laughs> What's the capital of New York? New York? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> New York What are the primary colors? Red, blue, and yellow How many yards in a football field? And who won the last Super Bowl? That ends this week's TNN. Thanks for watching. See you next week. And now, the most interesting video ever. Crow's Review. Crow's Review. Greetings, Julie. This is I, the knowledgeable crow. Question. Do you want to play a game? Now, let me be honest with you. A tall, bald man with a beard Ask me to review this or food fight. And since I like my sanity, I chose Saw. So, here it is for you. Saw. And yeah, so where do we begin? Oh yes, with the traps. The traps are ingenious. And half the time you think someone would be right behind you just about to grab you any given moment in time so yeah not to mention the fact that you know you're sort of genius you went for every single contingency which I find amazing so, this movie series is a classic a timeless classic and now I just what, what, what I gotta review the I gotta review the video game, but, but that thing sucks. I have to, I can't the series. Ah! Okay, fine. The saw video game. Let's talk about that for a bit, or as I call it, OW! OW! The pain is real! Yeah. The video game hurts. It visually causes me mental pain playing it. It is annoying. The puzzles take forever. Not to mention that you can barely see. Combine the fact that there's tripwires that instantly kill you when you trip on them around every corner. And since you can't see because it's like Curse of Darkness or Silent Hill, it is a pain. You will often die over and over and over again. The battle mechanics suck. There's no point grabbing a weapon when your fists do more damage. That's what then everyone you save is a jerk to you. Only one guy, one guy you save is good, is nice to you. And he dies five seconds after. What's the point of this? How much was the budget? Around a thousand? Good God, what did they spend it on? Because it wasn't on the game mechanics at all. Yeah, I bet they probably spent it on parties and all that. Okay, now that I got that out of my chest. Do not throw in a chest blister. No, no. I said chest out of my chest, but that doesn't mean a chest booster. No, no, get back there. Anyways, now that I got that out, I'm expecting a chest booster any time now. I just will say that. Anyways, so.
So there was a time when Saul ruled the world. It was the bloody red king and it knew it. There was one every Halloween. But after this game, I find it kind of funny how after this game comes along, it ends. It's like some ominous black figure in a black hoodie came and stopped it all. Who even knows who that was? All I know is, good God almighty, if it wasn't for this game, Saul would still have many, many, many sequels. I don't know who made this game. I don't care who made this game. It is bad. It's holding this game back. The series as a whole, because, including this game, is a 5.5 skulls. But together, without the game, it is a 10 skulls. With the game, 5. Do not buy the game, watch the movies. They're all good. The only thing the game's got going for it is the fact that it comes brings back some old classic tracks that you love to see. Other than that, no. Leave the game behind. It sucks. It literally blows chunks. I hope that game dies in a fire. It turned up step. But yeah, I gotta go see a man about called Jigsaw about getting this trap removed. I mean, machine removed. Well, later. Now, let's do a new segment for me. Well, I give you a hint of what I'm going to be reviewing next week, and you leave us to get, and you guess in the comments section below. If you get it right, I will give you a shout out next video. Again, my hint is it's made by the same people who made Nightmare Before Christmas and uh, the feels, the feels all real.